All right, let's get this show on the road. We got Monkish Realness. And I chose the, uh, the most hype beer that I had in my fridge for today's video. Because we're dealing with the most hype uh, razor that I've came across in a while. So, Monkish Realness. Uh, brewery out of California. This one's coming in at 8.3%. See that right there. And it looks like we got a double dry hopped, double IPA. So you can see that right there. Not much going on with the label, but that doesn't really matter much to me. It's about what's inside. It's about what's inside. How does this thing perform? How does it taste? How does it smell? I can tell you it looks good. So we got it poured into a nice uh, tiku glass here today. It's got a nice bright orange color on it. This one was a gift from Jack over at the virtual groom room. So thank you Jack and cheers brother. One thing I found with Monkish they are always packed with fruity flavor. I mean, just jam-packed with passion fruit, citrus. I mean, just packed with um, these very vibrant fruit flavors. And they have a nice, soft, pillowy mouthfeel. This one has like a low-medium bitterness. Like medium to low-medium bitterness. Um, something that I kind of wish they would have more of is a little bit more bitterness in some of their offerings but regardless still very tasty all right let's talk about the soap and splash we're going to be using marting soaps legend and i think this was made around the time of strike gold shaves commander in chief formula so it's probably pretty similar to that not the most updated soap days but still good shit I have it lathered up already over here in my uh, Thirsty Badger shaving bowl. It looks very creamy, dense, luxurious. Uh, the shaving bowl is badass, of course, a beautiful product out of Canada. There's a closer look at that lather right there. Like I said, looks quite dense and luxurious. Got the Alpha Shaving Company Outlaw Handle in silver here with a silver synthetic knot on top and we're going to be using today maybe I should open this first the Blackland Razors Era so this is the first time this is going to be a first use first impressions and there's a look at this razor today I'm going with the open comb three plate we got a nice uh, slim head profile right there. We got the uh, open open comb on the side there. Looks like it's nice blocky, chunky open combs. The handle is a um, like a smooth finish, and it does have these little points right here that are uh, to aid with grip. It also let me grab it. It also comes with these little rings that fit into these slots if you prefer that for extra grip. Um, but I don't. And then it came with a Persona Lab Blue blade, so that is what is loaded up in here today. And if you want to see the underside, it kind of used like a three post uh, system. And it has the Blackland USA and then level three. So. You can really customize this razor. I think it has 10 plate options, 5 standard bar, and 5 open comb. One thing I noticed, and I guess we're just going to start off on a negative foot, is that when I threw this blade in, and I hope you can see this, but I threw this blade in and just screwed the top on because I'm so used to having, you know, premium razors that I don't have to worry about. But if you can see, the blade is cockeyed. Like, I don't know if you can see that, 
but the exposure of the blade is thicker on this side and thinner on this side. And then of course it would be the same on the other side because it's cockeyed. So it doesn't load perfectly straight. So that's something to be aware of. Also, if, um, if you're not a fan of overhang, there is very, very, very minuscule overhang. Maybe half a millimeter or so on either side. So very minuscule overhang, um, but there is some. Let me go ahead and take this apart and try to uh, straighten it out. And we will we will get this shave on the road since we already burned a few minutes. But it's been a while. It's been a while since I had to stare a razor down and make sure that the blade was loaded um, flush. And I think we got it now. There's such little uh, blade overhang there, like blade uh, exposure on this three plate that you can hardly even see <laughs> that it's over, but that looks a little, a lot more even now. But yeah, compared to those teeth, it just, the blade barely hangs out from under that open comb or from under that top cap. So it's going to be an interesting shave, but we're going to give it a fair shake. Um, so this is a, this is what they claim, this is what Blackland Razors claims to be, um, the first time this technology has ever been used in the straight razor, or in the safety razor world. Um, this is metal 3D printing. And so, you're gonna have to do your own research on that, but... Metal 3D printing in conjunction with CNC machining to create this razor here. It is a stainless steel razor and it came to me at $75 for um, a fully assembled razor with one plate and then for an additional plate, it was thirty-five dollars, and I only bought, I only bought the two plates, so I can't really tell you what the fully assembled um, kit would be. But that's what I got mine for. So my total was a hundred and ten dollars for the two base plates, the top cap, and a handle. Uh, if you want more impressions on the packaging and maybe my thoughts on the finish of the razor, check out the unboxing that's going to be uploaded directly before this one. And I'm definitely gonna I'm definitely gonna name that video so it's easier to find. Um, so I'll put like Blackland Era unboxing or something like that. That way it's easy to find. But um, if you want more impressions on like the packaging materials and how those held up in transit or the finish on the razor and how that held up in transit or how that arrived to me rather, then check out that unboxing video. I will say for the most part the razor looks unscathed in, instead of maybe one area which is where the threading was. Um, where the handle goes into the top cap. There was uh, some two bits of threading that were kind of pushed in, which does cause a little bit of alarm for me, but hopefully it doesn't create any issues. All right, and the scent on this one is bold and banging, and it is beautiful. But we're not here for the soap, we're here for the shave. So Persona Lab Blue. Um, blade, first use, and first use of the Black Lanera. All right, the initial swipe is in the books. 
I'm kind of processing my thoughts here. Feels smooth, it doesn't feel threatening whatsoever. This is of course with the grain for me. I have about three days growth, so this razor is going straight to work on about three days growth. I'm noticing I'm having to approach this with a little bit more of an angle than I'm used to. And I think that's because the, the comb, the open comb, extends so much further past the blade that if you don't, if you don't have like this more steep angle, you're going to be getting more of the comb in contact with the skin rather than the blade in contact with the skin. So definitely that oversized comb is definitely doing some uh, protection for you and you really gotta really gotta extend your angle to a point where you're getting contact with the blade now I have a few blemishes right over here on the left side of my neck so if I nick those I'm not gonna count that against the razor So far, so good though. It feels comfortable or non-threatening. I don't mind a bit of blade feel. And this one, I wouldn't say it has a ton. I'd say it has a low, low level of blade feel. But I don't mind that. I do think, however, I'm kind of feeling the the open comb drag over my skin a little bit. I just, I feel like I feel the open comb in contact with my skin way more than I feel blade. And it's kind of a, kind of a weird experience there. I don't know how I feel about it, but I'm going to take a swig. Let's uh, do a quick feel around. All right, there's definitely still some growth. I can feel, I can definitely feel when I do like against the grain swirls that there's definitely still some work to be done. But that is to be expected. That's just pass one. But I visually see that it knocked down some of that growth. My uh, my <laughs> my sink down here is chock full of hair, so it definitely it definitely was doing its job. Let me go ahead and rinse my hands. We'll get some more lather on. Um, yeah, with the grain, felt pretty smooth, pretty comfortable. I, I noticed myself putting much more um, of an angle on the razor because when I wasn't when I wasn't getting that higher angle on the razor, I was scraping the open comb teeth across my skin rather than actually getting the razor in contact with my skin. And so I was able to actually see the teeth marks um, left behind instead of just a smooth clean swipe left behind which lets you know that the blade was in contact with your skin the whole time. That's always an indicator when uh, you're using an open comb <laughs> you know you got the angle right or wrong. If you're seeing those teeth marks left behind your angle is probably a bit off. But if you're seeing a clean slate left behind then your angles probably on because the razor blade itself doesn't have you know teeth in it 
So the razor blade is going to leave it clean even if there's teeth. So that's something to keep in mind. All right. Let's go ahead. Paint it on another layer of this luxurious leather. The bathroom smells fucking great right now. And you can see, although it has teeth, it is left behind smooth. That's how I know. Angle is on. An example, if the angle was off, that's what you'd be seeing or some, some variant of that. You know what I mean? So you kind of got to adjust to that more heightened angle to get it just right. But when you do, you'll feel that blade ever so slightly in contact with the skin. Like I said, it does have a little amount of appreciable blade feel. I would say the, uh, the level three open comb is definitely non-threatening as far as blade feel goes. I wouldn't hesitate to recommend this to anybody who enjoys an open comb razor. Um, and even so much so that if it is your first time ever using an open comb razor, I, I think I'd happily recommend level 3 open comb to you. Because level 3 is their medium efficiency. And I'm sure that's going to be on point. I usually can get a BBS with a medium efficiency razor. I got these blemishes I'm trying to go around over there. Looks like I, looks like I got away unscathed. Which lets you know this razor definitely comes across smooth. But, um... Yeah, this is definitely a um, user-friendly razor. I think you, the natural angle that you might think of using if you're a seasoned safety razor, double-edged razor shaver, you might find yourself using a little bit higher of an angle in order to get uh, full contact with the blade. And um, that's perfectly okay but it's just something that um, might take a little bit of practice or getting used to a little bit of muscle memory or just a little bit of adjustment on the fly on your part I only do two passes so we're gonna call it there I'm gonna get this lather off the face and we'll feel around and we will see how we did what I'm feeling For the most part, we're pretty damn BBS. I do feel a little bit right kind of on the edge here and on the edge here. So let's go ahead and uh, try to swipe that real quick if we can with the soapy hands. Kind of right in this, right in this area. Yeah, that feels better. Yeah, that feels better. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, grab the faithful Lancaster red towel here. Get this lather off. We'll get some aftershave on. So, first run with the Blackland Era. I purchased it specifically for the open comb offerings. Although I got one standard bar and one open comb. 
If I find it to my liking, I might get more open comb offerings. To be honest, in my mind, and I don't know if other people are thinking this too, content creators or otherwise, but in my mind, I'm stacking this up against the Rockwell. Blackland claims that this is a going to be a mass-produced razor. Rockwell is definitely a mass-produced razor. And where I don't know if they're going to actually meet in volume produced annually or anything like that. In my mind, I'm stacking these razors up against each other for price points and quality expected. And <clears throat> the era has open comb offerings and the um, Rockwell doesn't. So where the era can find a spot in my shave den is if I find a liking with the open comb offerings. And this first shave was a good shave. It was enjoyable. It didn't blow my socks off, but I don't know if it was supposed to. Definitely on the fit and finish, I think the Rockwell has the win. The Rockwell just looks better out of the box. And the packaging, in my opinion, better out of the box. But the shave, the shave on this era was pretty nice. And um, further use will tell where it, uh, where it stacks up and if it's worthy of staying in my shave den. So <clears throat> that's the first run with it. I'm not going to go too hard on it. I'm going to give it some more use. And then we'll give more detailed thoughts as we go. But that'll do it for today's video. Hope I hit all the important points. And if I didn't, sorry and shit. <laughs> go ahead and watch the uh, subsequent videos and I'll get it right eventually. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you. And I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.